both graduate opportunities and also some placement opportunities as well, internships. Um, so they're going to take you through lots of information, everything you need to know about the organisation. Um, and at the end, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions. Feel free to put those questions into the chat functionality and I can pick some of those up at the end. And also you will have an opportunity to unmute yourselves as well um, and ask those questions directly to either Abby or Chris. Um, so Abby is from um, the recruitment team at Nestle and Chris is actually a manufacturing graduate with Nestle at the moment. So both will be able to kind of give you hints and tips um, and an inside track from, from their relative points of view. Um, so with that in mind, I will hand over to, um, I think it's Abby first of all, um, but Abby over to you if you'd like to start your intro and then hand over with your slides, that'd be great, thank you. Yeah, of course. So um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, so as mentioned, I'm Abby. I work in the academy team. So we recruit all our graduates, interns, placements and apprentices across the UK. Um, I actually joined on a scheme myself. So I got I went to uni, got a film and TV degree, and then I joined on the HR scheme. Um, and I've been at Nestle now for about three coming up to four years, which has just absolutely flown by. And honestly, looking back, I've done so much um, in that time, stuff that I never thought I'd do. Um, but they just put a lot of, they give you a lot of encouragement, give you a lot of support. They put you kind of outside your comfort zone, but that's really helped me. I've never felt unsupported, but they put you in a place where you, you, you do things that you'd probably normally say no to. And then you realize, actually, I can do that. You just need that support behind you and that little push to do it. Um, so it's probably one of the best things I've ever done joining Nestle. And, and that sounds a bit biased coming from me as I'm promoting the schemes. But I do think it's something, you know, to, to potentially look into um, as, as a place to work and a place to kind of build your, build your career. Um, so I'll go through a bit about Nestle, um, a bit about our culture as well. But then we do have Chris on the call, who is a manufacturing graduate. So I'll save his slides um, as well so he can introduce himself properly. Um, but he can share his experience as well as being a graduate and go through that. But yeah, so from my point of view, I've gone through the application process. So I can kind of give hints and tips on like how I felt doing that. But then also I've been an assessor. I've facilitated assess the assessment centres. So I can kind of give a bit of background on that as well. So I'm just going to share my slide. Also, I apologise in advance. I have been hit with the cold flu that is going around. It's not COVID, but that is why I sound very rough and probably look very rough on this call as well. So I apologise. Hopefully, um, I'll still make sense on this call. Um, but yeah, I do apologise if it sounds a bit uh, rough. Um, so if I just share what I'll do is I'll share my presentations with you. First of all, I thought we would do a little bit of an icebreaker test. I don't know if you want to pop it in the chat, although I can't see it. So if you're happy to shout out, then that makes my life a lot easier. Um, but I just thought with all the quality streets out at the moment and the fact that Chris is on the call, who actually works at Halifax, so the factory that makes the quality streets, um, thought we'd do a little bit of a quality street test in terms of how well do you know them. Um, so does anyone know what the first one is? If anyone's typing in the chat, can you let me know? Someone let me know, <laughs> Chris or someone, because I can't see it. Yeah, don't worry. I will be monitoring the chat for you, Abby. That's you know, fine. For you. <laughs> to be honest, I forgot to write these down myself, so Chris, oh. you might have to jump in and help because oh, yeah. <laughs> this is all my memory. We've got a guess um, here from Alistair, Toffee Penny. Alistair yes, classic. that is right. Here's the Toffee, <laughs> toffee Penny. Anyone know what number two is? Takes a couple of minutes to type, doesn't it? As well, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. That's baffled me actually. That one, I can't think it's because it's not been Christmas for a while. I know we eat the orange wrapper might give it away. Oh, yes, Joanna's guest, orange crunch. 
Yeah, I think it's orange crisp. It might be crunch. I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it, it's, it's orange crunch. You got that right. Amazing. Um, and then number three, anyone know this one? I feel like it. Oh, Liam's guessed toffee finger. Yes, that is correct. There's quite a few toffees in here. Not my personal favourite, but I'm sure it's a favourite <laughs> of many. Um, number four, I think is underrated, but some people don't like it. Um, anyone know what number four is? Oh, Shelley is guessing fudge. Correct. That is yeah. the fudge. Um, number five. People could say this is bland and boring. Um, I'm not sure of this one. I think I know what it looks and tastes like, but I can't think of the name of it. This one is the milk choc block. So it's literally just chocolate. <laughs> so a lot of people say that's boring. Um, number six. Um, praline this is from Shelley again yeah it's very similar to that I think it's called the green triangle I think it's like a hazelnut or uh, Chris do you know what's in the middle uh yeah it is praline yeah essentially it's basically just like um essentially Nutella surrounded by more chocolate basically <laughs> <laughs> amazing um number seven is my personal favorite um does anyone know what number seven is Oh, yeah. Let's have a little. Oh, you've got a couple of guesses coming in here. So, Gifty saying wheelbarrow with caramel inside. The Liam wheelbarrow is, saying... is Cadbury's. Um, oh. but... <laughs> and Liam's guess caramel swirl. Yeah, that's right. So, it is caramel. Yeah. <laughs> Soft caramel. Um, <laughs> <I> said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite on Cadbury one. Um, number eight. Does anyone know what number eight is? I feel like I'm going to pull a wrapper that give this one away, I think, if I'm right. Yeah, the wrapper is a giveaway. Ah, if you say the strawberry flavour. He knows strawberry, but not sure of the name of it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Strawberry it is, cream. Yeah, strawberry cream. Um, yeah. And then just while we're on it, then number 12 is the orange cream. So strawberry oh, and orange. Okay. Uh, number nine, not a favourite of mine. Does anyone know this one? I think I do like this one. Oh, Joe's Ooh. guest, is it Nugget? No, I don't think it's Nugget. Oh, this is back. Yeah, Coconut Rectangle. Yes, it is the coconut. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it is definitely coconut. Yeah. It's, uh, so it's, it's like it's the bounty of celebrations. Yeah. The Coconut Eclair, it's called. Oh, um, there we go. Very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone will know this next one, I think. The most popular one by far is number 10. Um, anyone know? I'm guessing a lot of people do. Yeah. Osana's guessing caramel walnut. It kind of is, but I don't know if it's got a more proper name, isn't it? It is called uh, the purple one. <laughs> it doesn't relate to what the actual chocolate is, but yeah, it's like a, a nut surrounded by caramel and then chocolate. Yeah, Sana's favourite, she's saying in there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people's favourite. It's also, I think, the most expensive one yeah. um, to make. So that's why there's not that many in there. Oh, right, OK. Um, and then the cheapest ones to make are, I believe, the fudge ones. Yeah, that makes sense. There are more of those usually, aren't there? Yeah. Uh, number 11. Anyone know this one? Sorry. I don't know this one. This one is, I think it's called Toffee du Deluxe, Deluxe, if I'm right. It's quite a new one. Can't remember what it tastes like, actually, but that is another toffee one. We have done number 12. Anyone know number 13? Again, this is quite a recent one. I think there's a competition on this online, actually, for this particular quality street. I'm not sure. This one is brownie. 
chocolate brownie. Ah, um, number easy. 14 is a new one. I've not actually tried this one, but I think I might like it if I did. Um, anyone know what number 14 is? No guess is coming through just yet. I think no, these are like just the for time. Ones, aren't they? Yeah, just for time. This one is honeycomb. I can't remember the exact name, but this one is a honeycomb one. Oh yeah, and then, just guess honeycomb crunch. Shelley went yes. salted caramel as a guess. <laughs> yeah, honeycomb. And then number fifteen is a very new one. So that's the most recent one. It's just been revealed. Anyone know what number fifteen is? You'd have to have bought some really recently then, wouldn't you, to know this one? No guesses just yet. Chris, do you know the exact name of this one? It's... Oh, white it's, chocolate. It has got guess? white chocolate. Yeah, it's the first quality treat ever to feature white chocolate. Um, it's Is it like the white chocolate praline kiss or something like that, isn't it? Well, that sounds fancy. I'll bring it up. I'll get all the answers up now. There we go. <laughs> Um, see, so I, even I, even I don't know it and I work here. <laughs> Creme caramel crisp is the answer. Okay. So well then, if you've got any of them right, um, but just a little bit of a nice break and a bit of fun, um, pop in the chat as well which one your favourite is. It's always interesting to hear what people like. Mine is definitely number seven, um, but feel free to pop in what your favourites are as well. Um, so go to the next slide. So this is a little bit of an overview on Nestle. So we are the world's largest food and drink company. So across the UK, we employ over 8,000 people, and that includes in our 12 factories. So including the one that Chris is at, which is Halifax. Um, our offices, which are York and Gatwick. So I am based in York. Our distribution centres, and we also have a range of Nespresso boutiques as well. Um, each of the factories kind of specialise in a different area. So, for example, where Chris is in Halifax, it's more of your seasonal um, confectionery products, which is probably the best one in my opinion. So they'll do like the Easter eggs, the quality street tins and stuff like that. Or you've got uh, Wellin, which um, specialise in cereal. So they're cereal partners. Um, so it's all like your shreddies um, and stuff like that. And then you've also got Purina and all those different brands. So as mentioned there, there is almost 100 brands in the UK across multiple categories. So we're not just in confectionery. So I think when people think Nestle, they automatically think Kit Kat. But we are also in coffee. So you've got Nescafe. Um, we've got breakfast cereals, like I mentioned, with cereal partners. We've got in pet food, so Purina. Um, you know, San Pellegrino, Buxton Water, uh, Maggie products as well. They're all Nestle um, brands. So there's a few of them there as well. Just couldn't put them all up because there's absolutely there's hundreds. <laughs> so um, just have a look on shelves and see if they've got the Nestle because you'll be surprised, I think, with some of them. Even when I joined York, I didn't realise that Net Polos were Nestle and they're some of the products that we make in the York factory. So in the morning, I either smells of burnt chocolate and I know that we're making Kit Kats then. Or I will smell of mint, which smells amazing. And I know then that we're in production with Polos. Um, so you'll probably have a household product that is Nestle at the moment because um, 97% of UK households have a Nestle product in their home. Um, so we do feature in a lot of homes. I know I've got a cupboard full of cereal. I am a bit obsessed with cereal. I mix them all up, which apparently is not a normal thing to do. Um, but yeah, so you'll probably have a product in your home. Where more than 2 billion Nestle products are sold every year in the UK. Um, just to give a little bit more statistic for Kit Kats, this is a bit of an interesting fact. So 17.6 billion Kit Kat fingers are consumed per year. And in the UK alone, that's 1 billion per year. And to put that into perspective, that's 564 Kit Kat fingers per second that are consumed so we're going to be in production a lot to meet the demand that people people just tend to love Kit Kats. Um, I think Kit Kat junkies are popular as well. So, um, yeah, a lot of Kit Kats are consumed. And then we also export to over 50 countries as well. So that's just a little bit of a background on Nestle. 
But for me, what's more important is what's at the heart of Nestle. So what's that company culture like? And I think this is something to take away with your when you're looking at companies and graduate schemes. Look at what else the company is offering in terms of what the environment is like, what it's like to actually work there. So more than just the salary and the job, what else is that company doing? Um, I don't just mean Nestle. I mean, anywhere you look, I think a lot of people think an application works one way. So it's us choosing you, but ultimately it's your choice as well. It's your career. And in order to be happy in your job and in order to thrive in what you're doing, you need to pick a company where your values align, where you feel that sense of belonging. So it's really important that you do look at what else is on offer. So here's just a few things that Nestle do as part of their culture. So we have mental health first aiders. So any employee can go on a mental health first aid course. I think it's four days long and it's completely paid for by Nestle. Um, and we have a number of them men trained mental health first aiders and we have a mental health network as well. Obviously, with everything that's gone on, that's really, really important to us in terms of looking out for each other and making sure that there is that support for those that need it. And again, that works in ways of looking at different ways people can work. Some people prefer to work in a busy environment. Some people prefer to have that time on their own. So it's understanding that everybody works differently and that's OK. And everybody needs different things in order to support their mental health. So it's what we can do together to make sure that everybody feels supported. Uh, we also have the Pets at Work scheme, which is my personal favourite. Um, so basically, you can bring your dog to work with you. And um, so that's not just one allocated day a year. That's whenever you'd like to bring them to work. That's fine. And um, this is only in the Gatwick and York offices. Obviously, they can't go onto site. Sorry, Chris. Um, but in York, for example, we have around 35 dogs. It doesn't mean they all come in at once. Like I said, they can clock in and out whenever. It depends on the owner. But they go through their own little assessment centre, get a little pause port, clock in and out. There's a mug shot on the wall of their faces so we can see who's in and out of office. And it's just a really nice kind of environment to have them around. It's been proven that it helps productivity, relieves, relieves stress. And so it was kind of done as a trial in Gatwick and it was really successful. So we brought it into York as well. So if you do have any four-legged friends that you don't feel like you can leave, um, it's a great kind of initiative and scheme. Also, I have a feeling when we go back to offices, there'll be more dogs than actual employees at this rate. And um, with lockdown and everything, we've seen a lot more puppies pop up on uh, social media from our employees. Um, but it's just, again, it's an opportunity that gives employees a chance to get a dog that's not going to disrupt their work as well. Um, in some of our selected sites, we do have gyms. Um, these are often 24 hour and there's also classes that you are available to join. Um, if you wanted to pay a little bit extra, so uh, classes in the gym is free. But if you wanted a personal trainer, there are instructors on some selected sites as well. So you can get a personal trainer. It's open, like I said, all the time. So you can go during work as a little bit of a break. If you're feeling a little bit stressed, you just need an hour off. Or you can go in the morning or you can go in the evening. It just what suits your routine. We do then have a lot of networks as well that people can join. Um, so LGBTQ+ eradicating racism so again we've been involved in the pride we'll do a lot in terms of telling those real stories and working as a group to kind of look at what we're doing in terms of eradicating racism and making sure people feel like they belong and um, nestability so disability that doesn't just mean what's visible it's non-visible as well so what are we doing to support those with non-visible illnesses and um, we've got one world so looking at sustainability and how we're helping in the communities and the environment and um, like I said, we've got mental health as well. And that doesn't mean it ends there. If you've got a network that you want to set up, then that is absolutely fine as well. I know, Chris, I think you're part of the LGBTQ plus community, which is absolutely great as well. Um, two paid days volunteering for every employee. So every employee is entitled to go and do some volunteering. You can break those two days up into hours and have it spread across them, um, a couple of weeks or a month. Or you can take them as two days um, but it's just a chance to get out and give back to the community and um, we also have a charity partner this year we've selected mind and we'll do a lot of fundraisers for them as well and then we have the youth ambassador network which 
is a network for our graduates, our apprentices, interns and placements to help and support and upskill people like yourselves, young people looking to start their career. So we'll go out into universities, schools, colleges and um, care homes and really help in terms of building those employability skills. I always forget the pictures, but <laughs> there you go. There's a gym, a bit of pride, volunteering. There okay. So what I'll do now is I'll hand over to Chris so you don't have to stop, stop hearing me mumbling over words. Um, so I'll just stop presenting this one for you and then I'll pull up Chris's slides. She said. Over to you, Chris. OK. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, so I'm Chris, as I've explained. Uh, I'm a manufacturing graduate and I'm currently employed at Nestle in the Halifax site. Uh, so we are working on making all your quality streets for Christmas. Uh, and we've literally just started production on Easter eggs this week as well, ready for April already. Uh, and that uh, this site also makes uh, um, after eights on top of that as well. So I've literally been here a month today. Uh, so I'll try and answer all your questions, but uh, Abby's probably your port of call for any more, well, more detailed Nestle knowledge, I'll say that. Uh, but anyways, uh, could you go on to the next slide, please, Abby? OK, uh, thank you. So uh, just a little bit, ooh, a little bit about uh, myself. So I was born and raised in South Wales, uh, where I attended a Welsh school, so I'm fluent in Welsh. And then uh, in 2016, I moved up to Nottingham, uh, where I started my degree in chemical engineering at the University of Nottingham. And in that time, I joined uh, multiple societies. So I was a member of the Music Society. I was a member of the Chemical and Environmental Engineering Society. Um, and I was also on the committee of that. And I was also a member of the Volunteering Society Engineers Without Borders, where I went and did a lot of um, STEM outreach in local schools. Uh, then during my fourth year of university, I um, moved up to Sheffield where I did my industrial placement year. So I was with Mondelez International there. So I was making jelly babies, wine gums, licorice all sorts, tree bill mints, and I was a business development and engineering intern. Basically, I was involved in six projects, uh, improving sort of site safety, product quality, and overall site productivity as well. And this is what really sort of sparked my interest in the foods and beverage industry as well, and was just why I wanted to apply for Nestle as well. So after that exciting 12 months, uh, I then moved back to Nottingham, finished my master's degree, graduated. And for the last month now, I've uh, I've been here in Halifax. So uh, as I said, Quality Streets after eight Easter eggs and my current projects are all based on um, sort of loose wrappers and how that incurs waste foreign bodies, as well as sort of developing the factory's OMP, which is like what we sort of like to work to. Uh, anyway, so that's a bit about myself. Uh, could you go on to the next slide, please, Abby? That's great. Um, so I just want to talk a bit about my application um, and sort of my motivation towards why I wanted to apply for Nessie in the first place. So as I said previously, I worked uh, with Mondelez International, and this really sparked my uh, sort of uh, passion for wanting to work in the uh, FMCG sector. So I really feel like it's a fast paced uh, industry and it's continuously evolving with consumer trends, particularly nowadays as consumers are demanding healthier and more sustainable products, whilst also still wanting the same flavour, taste and texture of brands that they all know and love. So there's constant uh, challenges and uh, evolutions in our products that we have to make. So it's something that's constantly moving and there's constantly new problems to uh, to be solving. So that that's something that really appealed to me uh, in general about the actual industry. Additionally, uh, I find it really cool to sort of see a product on the shelves of a supermarket and knowing all the work that goes behind it and knowing the work that you've put in to actually get that product on the shelf in the most efficient way possible too. Uh, and on top of all that, Nestle is the biggest food and drinks company in the entire world. So it was a bit of a no brainer for me uh, enjoying that the, this sort of industry and applying for Nestle in the first place. Um, and upon actually researching Nestle, uh, they really have 
strong commitments uh, and visions for the future. So stuff like sustainable agriculture, uh, we're really trying to cut down on our emissions from our supply chain, as well as making sure all of our packaging is working towards sort of recyclable, uh, recyclable packaging. Um, and we're also providing a lot of sort of meat and dairy alternatives with new products that are also coming out as well. So this is these are just a few of the reasons why I wanted to apply for the Nestle graduate scheme in the first place. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so a few tips and tricks basically on how to get a graduate program or a industrial placement if that's what you're looking for as well. So firstly, I definitely say consider the industry that you want to go into. Um, usually graduate schemes are roughly about two years long. This is what the Nestle one is. Um, and if you're not that passionate about the industry or if you don't really like the company you're working for or don't like your job, uh, then you might potentially be stuck there for a, for a bit of a while and you're and ten, you tend to actually continue um, within the industry that you're in following on to the on from the graduate scheme. So really research what you want to do yourself before applying to anywhere. So once you've actually got that in your head of what you kind of want to do or an industry that you particularly want to go in, apply for absolutely everywhere uh, that aligns with your interests. I say this just because you've got to be prepared for rejections. As horrible as it might sound, you're going to get a lot of emails saying, unfortunately, you, you weren't successful this time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's all about reflecting on those experiences, thinking about what you could have done better next time, and then continuously ap applying. So for example, before I accepted my Nestle job offer, I'd, I'd applied for 33 other applications. Uh, so it's it's not as easy as just applying for one place and getting a job. You've really got to push yourself out there and not get disheartened by uh, by a few rejections here and there. So say you've, you've applied now and you've got yourself an interview. What are you going to do? So firstly, you've got to research the company you're actually going for. So their sustainability commitments, what their targets are, if they've had any new recent innovations. Um, so obviously this really shows why you want to work for the company you're applying for um, and help, helps you sort of stand out from the crowd. What is really good as well is to actually stay up to date on current events. So this shows you're a bit more of a well-rounded individual and rather than just um, repeating a uh, company's sustainability brochure back at them, you can tie in how this sustainable vision ties in with current events that are happening at the moment. Uh, so for example, we've got COP26 coming up in November. So it'd be really great to see how uh, sort of challenges and targets come out from that and how that's going to affect an industry that you might be applying for. And obviously during the interview, using the STAR technique is really, really crucial. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, that's uh, situation, target, action and result. Uh, so basically it's a way of shining and making sure all your experiences and all your examples that you're giving to the interviewer, um, you're sort of saying every avenue that you've been down within that example. So for example, uh, stuff like any industrial placements you've been involved in, any society events, any volunteering, part-time jobs, or if, even if you had a really hard time uh, in a team exercise at university, how you actually gone about resolving that kind of issue there. And um, em employees want to know how you shine as a person as well. Um, and yeah, like like Kate's saying, uh, the careers team is always there to help. I, I made sure to use make great use of my careers team at Nottingham. They really want you to uh, succeed and to actually get a graduate role as well. Um, so yeah, those are just a few of my tips and tricks. Uh, but anyways, next slide, please. And so support and the future. So I just like to quickly touch on how I felt my the first month that Nestle's been and what my goals for the future are as well. So I just like to say that the support from everybody on the manufacturing site has really been great. All my co-workers are so lovely at um, actually just sort of introducing me around to everybody around site and I'm gradually working my way around without getting too lost in the factory. Um, and there's been a lot of help as well from the Nestle Academy also. So we've had a lot of introduction days, both online and we also have had an in-person one, which has been really valuable to actually see people face to face for a change from my graduate cohort. Um, and like Abby said before, uh, Nestle is really taking a proactive approach to mental health and physical well-being as well, which is something that I really found quite um, quite surprising actually to know how how much Nestle actually cares about each and every one of their employees uh, is something that's really valuable to me. Um, 
And as well, as Abby said previously, I'm a member of the LGBTQ plus community. So to know that Nestle is actively encouraging inclusivity and diversity through interactive discussions and calls is something that was really valuable to me and made me feel really welcomed at Nestle also. Uh, so to quickly touch on what I'm doing at the moment, uh, so I'm looking at how loose wrappers in our product hall are basically causing issues surrounding generating more waste and more costs for the business. And so how are we going to go about uh, eliminating those loose wrappers? So there's a lot of problem solving skills and talking to a lot of different people. Um, and I'm also looking at how we're going to remove uh, foreign bodies as well. So occasionally a consumer might find a bolt um, in their quality suite tin uh, that's fallen off a piece of piece of machinery or a container. Uh, so it's all about finding where those bolts are, finding the root cause of them and seeing how we can eliminate or mitigate them, basically. Uh, so my goals for the future with Nestle, I've only been here a month, so um, still got a qu still got quite a long way to go, but uh, definitely want to continuously develop my skills. So a lot of problem solving skills um, such as go see, think, do, um, smed, demaic. I think my slides have just gone, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah perfect I think timing. I may have cut out, but she'll be no back worries. in a second. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> That's the end of my presentation, actually, so that's perfect. But if anybody has any questions relating to Nestle, uh, the graduate schemes, or just how you're actually going to get onto a, an industrial placement or grad scheme, uh, more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Great, yeah. Well, because Abby, I think, is going to come on next to talk about the um, the grad schemes when she's back as well. So she'll yeah. cover off all of the different types of schemes mm -hmm. um, and the internships available as well. But yeah, please feel free to pop in the chat any particular questions for Chris as well while we wait for Abby to um, rejoin. Hopefully she's OK and can rejoin. <laughs> but we'll give her a few minutes or as well unmute yourselves as well if you wish and um, ask Chris directly. I'm sure he won't mind. No, I'm fine. I don't, I don't bite, I promise. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got a question coming. I think you can see that, Chris, from Gifty. Yeah. yeah. So what did the application process look like? So I think we are going to hear a bit about this from Abby. But yeah, from mm -hmm. your point of view, that'd be really good for you to, to answer. So I think my experience was slightly different because obviously uh, I applied in a pandemic world. Um, but it, it might be slightly different for you guys. But for me, it was an online application followed by a uh, sort of online test. So that's a numbers and uh, sort of personality quiz as well, just to sort of see if you would fit in at Nestle. Um, and then I had a recorded video interview. And from that, it was a, um, so it was sort of a, a very mini assessment center, which involved uh, me getting a few topics 24 hours in advance. I then had to prepare a presentation on the topics that were given to me. Um, and I also had to have a short interview as well uh, with a few people at Nestle, which was a, um, I think it was a skills based interview as well, if, if, what I, if, what, if I can remember it correctly. But uh, it all went really, really quickly. Um, so, and uh, best advice I can give you, as cheesy as it might sound, is just to be yourself um, and try and pull as many of those experiences from any placements, volunteering, part time work societies, or university work that you possibly can. Uh, so, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. That's great advice. Yeah. Oh, we've got another question come in as well. Um, so from Sana, how would you prepare for the exam as I applied for a graduate position, which I'm quite nervous about? So I think this might be preparing for like the assessment process, if I'm right, Sana. So in terms of how you'd prepare. So um, I'm, I take it you're sort of talking about so the online quizzes and tests, basically. Um, so there's loads and there's loads of research, uh, resources online which I used. Um, so you can have there's loads of practice, numerical reasoning, uh, as well as verbal reasoning stuff online. If you just Google it uh, and just honestly try try a handful of those, the more you do, the better you get at them. Um, they always trip me up in all my applications. Uh, but uh, the, yeah, honestly, the more you do and the more you practice, the easier they become. It's just all sort of getting your head around how they sort of ask the questions. Um, so you'll, you'll be fine though, honestly, just practice as much as you can. Um, Thank you, Chris. And I think Alistair's, um, from the quiz team's actually put a little, uh, couple of links in mm -hmm. here as well that'll help you if you need to practice some of those skills, yeah. which is great. Um, yes, Anna said thank you. That answered the question. And Gifty's also asked, what are some skills that you've already developed? So you know you've only been there a month, but is there yeah. anything that you feel that you've been really developed in already within Nestle? 
Yeah, so uh, definitely um, sort of a bit more structured problem solving skills. Uh, so here at Nestle, we use um, a range of different uh, sort of problem solving skills. So one of them that I've been using is called uh, Go See, Think, Do. And essentially, it's exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, so let's say we've got you've got a problem on the line. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, the lidder on the Quality Streets line isn't working. You go to the line, see that it's not working. You think about the problem. So you sort of ask the five why analysis. So uh, why is the lid not happening? It's like, oh, well, because um, it's not got the correct head on it. It's like, OK, why doesn't it have the correct head? Oh, it's because um, maintenance haven't uh, applied it on correctly or something like that. Basically, it's all about problem solving and finding the root cause and then standardizing an approach um, to make sure that the same doesn't happen again, basically. So all about uh, finding how you're actually going to fix the problem as well as make sure that it doesn't happen again. So uh, that's one of the skills that I've developed um, at Nestle. Um, another one is looking at data in a different way. So here at Nestle, we've got a lot of different um, sort of automatic data collection points. So that's on the line. So you can literally see in real time uh, how much, how many quality streets we're producing or how much downtime we've had on the line and what the issue might be as well. So I've had a lot of experience in how to look at that data and how to like manage it um, and as well how to sort of put it into something that's presentable uh, so you can actually get some results from it. So those are just a few of the skills that um, I've been uh, learning in the past months, but literally I've only been here a month. <laughs> Brilliant. It sounds like loads though, just within that short time, which is, yeah, is testament honestly. to the quality of the, the programme yeah. as well. So I know Abby's just obviously having a few difficulties kind of popping <laughs> back in. So what I, actually, I have actually got a copy. Uh, oh, here she is. Lovely. Oh, I'm go. just going to, here we go, just in time. <laughs> here we go. Hi, Abby. I don't know if you're back with us. Oh. Sorry, just Hi. I don't know what happened. I just got kicked <laughs> off and then don't it worry. froze on Chris's presentation, so I couldn't even do anything. So I had to shut oh. down and start again. So massive it's perfect timing. So we just did a bit of Q&A with Chris actually on, on his oh, slides. Okay. So it's it's back whenever you're ready, it's back over to you. And I have got the slides here as well if you need me to share them for you. Just Would let you me mind know. sharing actually? Is that Not okay? Because I need to connect to the VPN again. To Not bring at them all. Up. Not <laughs> Thank at all. You. These things happen, don't they? It's no problem. I'm okay. saying that it's uh, if it'll let me do it. <laughs> but here we go. <laughs> Right, there we go. Can, uh, oh, in fact, bear with me. Let me just go and share my screen and then you should all be able to see. So this is the kind of detail now, isn't it, around the actual schemes themselves? Yes, have a yeah. little look. Here we go. So I'll do it from this current slide here. Perfect, thank you. Just go back one. Lovely, there you go. So you should all be able to see that now. <laughs> Amazing. So um, basically, this is just about our opportunities. Um, so we have, obviously, for you guys, graduate and intern placement opportunities. But that is not to say that you can't join an apprenticeship either. So do have a look at apprenticeships. Um, personally, I did join an apprenticeship. I got a degree and then I joined an apprenticeship and it was the best thing that I ever did. So I'm always kind of an advocate for that as well. Don't just shut up, uh, shut off yourself to graduate opportunities because you are a graduate. And um, sometimes there's not a role available as a graduate scheme. So you might look elsewhere or there might be a more suited role as an apprentice. And um, so we, what I mean by that is there's different levels of apprenticeships now. So it's not just the advanced level three. You can get a paid degree in a specialised area. So I did a CIPD um, degree um, in HR. So I now have two degrees. So just keep your options open. So for our graduate programmes, we have product development, we have sales, we have HR, we have marketing, supply chain, manufacturing. I've got engineering on there, but I don't think it's relevant for a lot of the courses that you do, but that is an option as well. And then digital manufacturing. Um, and then in terms of interns and placements, we've got finance internship and engineering internship and a motion graphics internship and then placements. I know there's a few of nutrition people on nutrition courses. So we've got nutrition placement and a graphic designer placement. I have done a check on what qualifications are needed for nutrition because they are a bit specific and what universities they look at. And um, Edge Hill is one of them. So you should be absolutely fine to apply if you are interested for that placement opportunity. 
I won't go through each of them because I could be here for ages and I'm aware we've been talking at you a lot. But all of the information for all of these schemes are on our Nestle Academy website. So you just need to go in there, have a look, look at what they're asking for in terms of what the role is going to be like, um, the location, what the salary is, um, duration, all of the information that you need to know will be on that job advert. Just to give a little bit of background, so graduate schemes are two years long, as Chris mentioned, and the starting salary is £30,000, and that's for every single scheme, uh, uh, graduate programme, sorry. Um, and that will go up based on your performance each year. So that should increase as you gain new skills. Um, you should then get that reflected in your pay. Um, you don't need a level of a degree. So it doesn't matter if it's a 2-2 or a 2-1. As long as you've got a degree, then you should be eligible to apply. Most of them we don't need a specific degree for. So, for example, marketing, um, it's you can apply with any degree, um, but for some of them, there might be a specific um, area that you need to be in in terms of your degree. So, for example, engineering and manufacturing will be a bit more specific in what degree that you hold. So it's just, again, important to look at what the job advert is asking for. And then in terms of finance and placement, uh, in sorry, in terms of interns and placements, interns are 10 weeks long and they'll start in June. Um, and then placements, or you might know them as sandwich years, are a year long, and they'll start in um, June, I think, as well. Or it might be September, no, June as well for those. Um, so you'll do a year-long placement that should then coincide with your degree on what you're studying at uni. Um, so again, you're building those skills in a real working environment. So if we go on to the next slide... So this is just a little bit of a breakdown of the application process or what you can expect going through our application process. It will be different to each company, but I'll just focus on what, what it would be like if you were applying to a Nestle graduate scheme, for example. If you just hit next, um, Kate, it should have a little, there we go. So before it at Natural Assessment Centre, and it's all an online application, um, you'll be asked to do an eligib eligibility questionnaire. Um, so it's just, again, making sure you hit the criteria of the role. Um, so it's quite straightforward, quite simple, what you normally expect on an application. You'll then get asked to do an application form. This is to help us know a little bit more about you. So who you are, where you came from, a bit of that personal information, your qualifications. Um, so, yeah, there's nothing really you can do to prepare for this. It's just being your authentic self and being honest about who you are um, as well. And then from that, it'll, you'll be asked to complete a demographic questionnaire. Um, again, this is a choice, but it's really important that we, we're doing this demographic questionnaire. As, like I said, we're striving to be more in, a more inclusive organisation. And it's your responses to these questions that will enable us to adapt and support you through the process. So for example, if you needed extra time, we'll be able to pick that up and make sure that that's given to you. Um, it also helps us understand where we are in terms of what diversity we're, we're attracting through that pipeline and making sure that what we're doing in terms of our attraction activity is really inclusive as well. So it's just to help us um, benchmark against that. You'll then go on to an online assessment. So it's a create it's an exciting clear and easy way to use digital assessments and that help us to provide hopefully an immersive candidate experience it's help us learn more about you um, and help you to understand what it's like to work at Nestle as well so we'll ask you questions in the hope to understand how you behave in a range of situations and why so it might be that you're asked to order a few responses so from the approach you would be most to least likely to take in the given scenario or those which sound most to least like you and um, you can select the most appropriate response to the question of a scenario so if all from those provided or it might be that you're indicating on a scale where you would most fit um, based on the scenario or the question that's been asked so again it's just to help us understand a little bit more about you your learning style and your approach to work as well there is a, a Catfinity kind of preparation hub, so you can go through these exercises before you actually apply, just to give you a better understanding and feel of what it is to actually go through that. I will pop it in the chat after this call or send it to Kate so she can email, email it out to you all, but it's a great little platform to give you a bit more practice of what's, be, what's going to be expected. 
You'll then go on to job simulation. So if you could just go back to the other slide, Kate, it's okay. There you go. Um, so this is a little bit new for us, actually. Um, so this has just started this year. So a lot of you won't be familiar with it, but it's just to make it more of an engagement, engaging and relevant process for you. So it's really to help advance that candidate experience. So instead of you just sitting there and being asked to do a video interview, it's immersed into kind of what it would be really like to be on the scheme. So basically it's giving you insight into the role that you've applied for. So instead of just doing a video interview, it might be that it's presented to you like you're talking to a manager and how would you respond? There'll be emails and written responses that you go back to. There'll be a chat function. Um, so it just makes it more real and um, more like the working world. So you get an idea of what that kind of feels like. Um, so, yeah, so those kind of responses will be either written or via video. Um, and again, it's just to give us more understanding of you as a person, your strengths um, going through the process. Following that, you'll be invited to an assessment centre. At the moment, this is still virtual. Um, and what you'll do at an assessment centre is a strength based interview. Um, I think you probably know a lot about strengths already. I have a feeling a lot of the unis do talk about what strength is and how you can prepare. I'll give a few tips on the next slide about that, but everybody's got strengths, so don't be put off by that. A lot of people think if they talk about something they're good, good at, they're showing off or being really arrogant. It's about how you tell us. We're asking you to demonstrate your strengths, so don't hide from them. And don't try and compare yourself to someone else or match somebody else's strengths because everybody is different and that's really important. Everybody's got a voice and got something to give. If we were all the same, there'd be no innovation, no creativity. So it's really important that when you go through that strength-based interview, you are just your authentic self. You're just telling us about your hobbies, your interests, what inspires you, what are you motivated by. Bringing that into the interview will really help stand you out. There then could be a pair and group exercise that you'll be involved with. And again, you'll get all the information on the day for that. Um, and then there'll also be an SLA challenge that you'll get involved with. So again, to prepare a number of outputs and suggestions that you'll be able to share with the manager within the business for your assessment center day. So it should all make sense on the day, those things. Um, what will happen as well, you'll join a pre-call before the assessment centre. So a chance to meet us, the academy team will answer any questions or concerns that you may have about the assessment centre before you even start on the day. Again, to try and alleviate as much stress and pressure as possible. We're not trying to catch you out. We're not trying to make you uncomfortable. We will see you perform at your best when you are feeling your self feeling that confidence so we'll do everything that we can to make to try and settle those nerves and help you kind of perform to your best of ability on the day and um, so we'll go through all of this prior to that assessment centre um, and then you will find out if you've got the job or not that is the last last stage but with every application we will give you a feedback report so whether you get a job which hopefully you will or whether it is a regret like Kristen mentioned it does happen you'll have that feedback report with the things that you did really well and the things that you can improve upon again we're really wanting to help young people into employability whether that's with us or another company so we're not just going to leave it and you not know where it is that you went wrong we want to help you to understand what you can do next time to improve if you go on to the next slide so this is just like the top tips um, of the um, kind of application process. So you could bring them into different elements of it. But that I always believe that there's a part before hit and apply. There's three things. So one of them is to know the position. And um, so it's important when applying for a job that you understand the role and expectations and what those responsibilities are going to be. So the first place to look is that job description, which is often found on company websites, although they're also on prospects a lot of the time and different kind of recruitment um, adverts as well. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to employers for more information. A lot of us can be found on LinkedIn and a lot of us are very friendly and want to help and give advice. So don't be scared to reach out. 
the worst is going to be that you get ghosted or get handed over to someone else. But that is not a problem of you. You've been proactive. That's against us as a, an employer that's not helping. So the best thing you can do is just reach out if you want a bit more clarity on a job or if you'd like to find a little, out a little bit more about what it's like to be a graduate. Um, so, yeah, you can find a lot of us on LinkedIn or use the emails and contacts that are provided on the website as well. Another top tip is to highlight the keywords in the job description or advert that are kind of suggesting different strengths. And then think about examples of when you personally have used these strengths or things that are quite similar to these strengths as well. The next one is know the company. So I did touch about this um, before, but ways you can find out are company website, press releases, new articles, reports, some research studies, if there's any YouTube videos and clips that you can look at. So we have an SLA UK YouTube page. So there's different stuff on our goals and ambitions, sustainability, and um, there's an, the LGBTQ plus videos on there, eradicating racism videos, um, diff, uh, looking at different locations. So just do as much research as possible in terms of company culture. Um, and again, follow us on social media. You can see our handles on that slide there. So give us a follow um, and you'll find different stuff out on those, especially with when it comes to any other events that we're hosting. Um, so, for example, we will have spotlight sessions coming up. And um, I'll let Kate know as well after this when we've got them booked in. But that's for any student to join and we'll look at more specifically what the different functions are going to be. So you'll have a spotlight session on marketing, for example, a spotlight session on supply chain. So it just gives you more of a flavour of that particular scheme. And then finally, but most importantly, although people find it a little bit cringy, is know yourself. Um, so a STEM-based um, application recognises the potential talents of an individual. So it arises from your natural way of doing, thinking or feeling. So it's what energises you and what do you do a lot of. When you're doing something that you enjoy and you're doing something that you just naturally feel good at and you naturally do a lot, you, you're going to be more productive. That's why we use STEM-based recruitment. Um, it's also, like I said, recognising that everybody is different. So it's not trying to compare yourself to somebody else. And difference, I don't just mean ethnicity and gender. I mean difference of background, experience, difference of thought. And that's the only way that we're going to move forward and evolve. Um, so looking at challenges from different perspectives. Um, it's really important that you are authentic throughout this process. So Look, bring examples in that you've done and make sure you say yes to opportunities as well. Like Chris mentioned, being part of societies, any volunteering work. It's no secret a lot of people have degrees now and we get a lot of applications. So how you can get above that is what else do you do? What do you do on top of that that fulfills you, that is part of your interest, part of what motivates you? So I know a lot of the time people just like, oh, no, I don't need to do that or can't be bothered or um, a bit scared, or a bit fearful of saying yes to opportunities. But like you said yes to joining this today, just make sure you do as much as possible because everything you join, you'll be learning something new about yourself. Chris mentioned the STAR method. Um, so just to give an idea again, I've added an extra one. So the situation which you did mention, so it's describing the situation you found yourself in. Tasks or target, as Chris said, what tasks did you identify that needed to be done? Actions, what actions did you take? Result, what was the outcome? It's important that some things can change along the process so the intended outcome might not be reached. That's absolutely fine. Talk about what you learned from that experience. And that's why I've added an extra R in there, which is reflection. So what did you learn from that experience and what are you going to take forward into another project or situation to drive even better results or improve that efficiency? Another top tip there is to talk in the I and not the we. So we don't want to hear what your friend did. We don't want to hear what your team did. We want to know what you did. What was your role that you took? What was your ideas? How did you contribute? Another thing to remember is well, it's a conversation, not an interrogation. We want to know as much about you as possible. That's why there's not just one question. There's multiple questions. There's a long process because we can't expect you to be perfect in every single response, but we want to give you enough chance to show us who you are and bring in those examples. Make sure there's depth to the examples that you give as well in a range of different ones. So jot them down and spend a week or two weeks thinking of every achievement, no matter how big or small and what strengths you needed to 
accomplish them. Um, it's okay to pause, it's okay to think, mistakes happen, don't get caught up on them. Like I said, just move on to the next and see it as another opportunity. A lot of people finally always ask about that question about weaknesses. So what is your weakness? Um, a lot of people say turn it into a positive or just kind of swerve away from it. I personally wouldn't. I think it's important that we all have self-awareness. And like I said, nobody is perfect. We all have things that we're working on and that's absolutely fine. We're human. Um, but change that word weakness into a development opportunity. So let us know as assessors what it, what you recognise in yourself that you know you could improve. So, for example, my organisation is probably one of them. And then what are you proactively doing to, to make sure that you are developing this strength and this skill? So you're not just sat back on it. You're not just accepting it. What are you doing? You're aware. And this is the steps I'm taking. Um, as I mentioned, say yes to things, um, but really it's just about being yourself and feeling like, you know, you've got a voice and something to give because every single person on this chat does. Um, it's not arrogant, it's not anything like that, but it's important that you realise and recognise that you do all have a strength and multiple strengths and that there's thousands out there and you don't have to be a natural leader. You don't have to be um great at drawing or anything for marketing there's a place for everyone and it's just finding your niche and being confident in that as you go through the process like i said you can follow us on social media and our website is there as well for anyone but that is it i'll hand back over to kate Sorry, uh, yeah, it skipped on quite quickly there. I'll leave that up for a second so that people can see the social media handles on the right hand side as well. But some brilliant, brilliant advice in there and hopefully that resonated with, with quite a lot of you as well. That was great. Thank you. Um, I will stop sharing that screen now and just go back onto, um, onto camera. So there were a couple of um, last minute questions that came in as well for you both, if that's OK. So one was about location so for the nutrition placement and graphic design um do you know what the locations are of those placements off the top of your head either Abby or I have a feeling nutrition will be York or Gatwick um but again I don't know if it's specified on the job a job advert if it's not it's something maybe to to ask as you go through or if, if it is a real concern for you just drop an email and just see and we can find out for you and um, a lot of the times you'll find it with any grad roles grads are expected to be geographically mobile so they'll be able to move across from side to side which is why a lot of the locations aren't on our grad schemes and that is one of the questions in the application form um, right okay so that is just something to bear in mind. It's it's an expectation of grads that they're able to do that. But we are working in the background to look at how we can support that as well. Um, so some of them will have locations on there. But if they don't, it's probably because they expect you to be able to be mobile with where, you, where you're placed. Perfect. And just on the back of that, actually, um, do you have hybrid working in operation in some of those grad roles? So a bit at home and a bit in a, a place of work or is it all kind of office based for a lot of the time? It's definitely now shifted because of COVID. We were very flexible anyway as a company and um, so we do have flex days so you'll have 25 days holiday and then plus a flex day each month so that is recognising that each employee tends to do over time at some point so you get an extra day back in holiday so you'll have 25 days holiday plus 12 days flex um, as well. Um, so and also within offices not necessarily factories so I've got to be careful here but within offices there's no like start and end day time there's no like you're not in for nine and finish at five it's a personal thing that you discuss with your line manager I'm not a morning person so I tend to work start later but I'll finish later and um, some people in the team like to just get, get on with it and then go early so they'll start really early so it's a preference that you've talked through with your manager it's all based on trust since COVID, we've realised that we can work from home. We're capable of doing it. Um, so we have got a hybrid approach that is coming in for trials and stuff. So we'll see how we're working with that. So again, that's again based on a team or individual decision based on your need. Do you need to be in office or can you work from home? So that's how it will be approached. And it's something that you'll discuss with your team. We've kind of realised as a team that we miss the collaboration. So we're trying to get in at least two to three days a week together eventually um 
but we also understand that we can work from home and that's absolutely fine so it, again it's just talking with your manager about what your preference is if you need to be in work you'll have to go into work if you can work from home then that's absolutely fine Perfect. Well. Thank you, Abby. That's amazing. And there was a question from Alexandra as well, quite a good question. I think this one, if you fail the application process, um, so this year round, is can you reapply? And if so, when? Is there a period of time you have to wait to reapply? Do you have, obviously, maybe the next year? I don't know if you can answer yeah. that one. So obviously, you can only apply to one scheme per year. Um, so if you get rejected from it, then you can't apply to another one, but you can then apply the following year. A lot of people kind of someone did actually ask if I failed the first time I'm just going to fail the second time but that's not true because a year is a long time to develop skills and learn from different things and join different opportunities that are going to um, build the application uh, form for you so don't get disheartened like Chris said by rejection we've all had them I've had them it's just what you do in that time to kind of build those skills and build that experience so that when you join again you're joining more with more to give um about yourself so um just take it as a learning opportunity um and yeah a lot can change in a year so don't get disheartened Absolutely. No, that's great. Especially if you've got feedback the first time around, you can use that feedback as well. So I suppose just given a couple of minutes, I know we've run just by a minute, but if there's anything else that anybody else wants to ask as well, just give like one minute or so to see anything coming through on the chat. Um, yeah, so Alexandra just saying thank you, Sana saying thank you for the advice as well. Um, so just see if there is anything else that will come through or as I say, feel free to pop up your hand and I can grab a quick question as well before we let Abby and Chris go. Just give that a few seconds. But I suppose I'll leave that to happen. But while while we're wrapping up, you know, I just on behalf of um, us at Edge Hill, you know, wanted to say a, a huge thank you, obviously, because there is some great advice in there, some great tips. And it seems like there's loads of resources as well for students to kind of find online. Um, and anything that you share, Abby, obviously I will forward through to, to the students as well on your behalf. Um, Benipal's just asked, can I um, join the marketing team as an animation student? So could Benipal go for the marketing role as an animation student? Um, um, the marketing is a massive function. So there's obviously loads of different kind of areas within marketing. So animation would be one of them. Um, so part of the marketing grad scheme, I'm not sure you might have to check the job advert. I personally haven't considered each one. It's not part of my role, but um, it could be an opportunity within marketing that you, you do go through that. Um, alternatively and um, there's direct higher jobs as well so checking our normal careers hub so because it's sometimes when they're more niche jobs like animation it's more likely to come up as a direct higher role so it's, yeah. it might be worth checking the direct roles as well on the careers hub yeah perfect yeah great and just everyone obviously just passing through their thank yous as well for all of the information and all of the resources and see Abby's popped something in the chat there so this is your kind of um, portal to get some practice isn't it at some parts of the assessment processes in there um, so you can all take that away and refer to that and have a little go afterwards as well amazing thank you well I think we've covered off everything there um so yeah huge thank you to Abby and Chris that's been brilliant and thank you to all of you for for joining as well um and I will be sending through to all of you by the way um who've attended a follow-up email and I'll share a recording of the session in there as well I know a couple of you have, have missed maybe the beginning so I will send that through for you uh, but thank you again and um, looking forward to catching up with you soon, Abby and Chris. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for joining, much. everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yes. Bye. Bye.